Wow. That's actually the word I get on WhatsApp mostly in response from Ghana. It always cheers me. But I really do feel wow here. I was on a similar stage a week ago at TEDx Yale, and nobody applauded as we were coming out. So this is great. You start with a rousing ovation. You go Ghana. I wanted to talk a little bit about how, what I've come to know about your blessed country. And I really do give thanks to God for the opportunity to be here. The hospitality I've seen in Ghana is like none other anywhere. And my visits over the last three years have been some of the best things that I've ever had in my life. And I want to talk about education, or as I would call it and have it on my shirt, Lux uh, Vim at Veritas. Vim you know, you have it in abundance. Lux at Veritas is the motto of my university, Yale University. Lux and truth in Latin. Because after all, what good is truth if you can't see it? Those of you who know rivalries of American schools will get a reference to one that has just one word. I also went to divinity school, and like many here, I'm a person of faith. So I might say that today my text is Isaiah 9-2. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. But I'm talking about myself and my encounter with your country. Because before I first came three years ago to visit Ghana and then came back many times, I only had the dimmest notion of this country. And I really have come to see the brightness of the Aquaba and Vim and the people of this place. It's what keeps me coming back. But it, we all do know that Ghana has its challenges, represented by this slide, or as Spitzik would freestyle on Yo-Yo Tin's Doomsor Doomsor De Boer. But I wonder whether in these very difficult, tough times, there might be renewed light and new light to find, and whether, once again, the black star can shine the brightest. Or, as my friend Kaysun, who now lives in Toronto, sings, what a sight to behold, a black star rising. And I want to offer these thoughts, I'm just a storyteller, and I want to start really with my story. These Behind me are my grandparents and some other family members. None of my grandparents went to high school, much less college. My grandmother, Moran, had a third grade education. My own mother went to high school, but not to college. And one thing we did have was a lot of vim, and the picture actually shows that I had more than my sisters, which I guess is why I'm in Ghana and they're not. But. You might wonder, how did a kid, I was born 9,119 kilometers away in Kentucky. I've been able to go many places and meet many people. I can say that Effia brings out the best in me, that I turned pigeon, just a little manifest, that shark go kill me, and that I really have been able to do some interesting things here and elsewhere. My grandparents would not believe that this was possible. And as I said, I have found the greatest riches, better than any salary or wages, in the kind of connections I've made here and that I've made in my life. And so how did a boy from Covington, Kentucky, end up later on the national in Accra and be able to go the places I've gone and meet the people I've met. This really is the answer. It's a picture of one of the buildings at Yale. I have been able to do what I've done for a very simple reason. It's not about magic or about money. It's simply access to a liberal arts education and being part of a place like Yale that inspires the minds, that inspire the world. A liberal arts education, and we've heard it from other people today, a liberal arts education is the best global passport. 
it is the best thing that we can have to educate leaders. It doesn't need to be a question, as we've heard, between science or art, science and art. Quantitative skills are critical, but so are qualitative skills. Coding so does the kind of leadership that comes with empathy and cultural competence. To win in this world, people, countries, need to be able to have leaders who can do teamwork and synthesis. Those are all skills that come from a liberal arts education. And this is actually something that's quite enjoyable, as some of these graduates from the Yale Drama School who are behind me, including Lupita Nyong'o, show. We don't take everything seriously. A liberal arts, a liberal arts education is a joyful thing. It's about creativity, connectivity, impact, and really learning from each other. And I would say that the real lesson is you don't have to always stay in the same lane. We've heard that from others today, and that's what this kind of creativity and education is all about. Now, this is a picture behind me of freshman move-in day at Yale back in the fall with the president and the dean of Yale College. One of the members of the entering class is a guy whose story you may have heard, Kwasi Enin, a Ghanaian-American who was admitted to all eight Ivy League schools. Obviously a smart kid, he chose Yale. And he was quoted recently as his experience so far is, quote, a happy state of being. And that really is what we strive for to be a place where people work hard, but also have this spirit of joyfulness. He studies biochemistry, but he studies much more and is in an a cappella singing group. You don't always have to stay in the same lane. You don't have to choose between science or art. You can do science and art. And I think my sense of the lights in this country, and I really have come to see the brightness. Are there some ways that Ghana has its own Vim Lux at Veritas? I just wanted to mention a few. It is humbling to be on the same stage where Patrick Awua was not long ago, and I have to say the visits I've made to Ashesi are some of the most inspiring times I've spent in Ghana or elsewhere. This is a place that is quite extraordinary and I think deserves a lot of support and places like it. Now they have 600 students, so maybe that doesn't seem like a lot, but let me give you some context. Yale's old. We were founded in 1701. We had one student in our first class, and like a Shesse, was sort of in, in houses and borrowed buildings in the early days. Yale did not have 600 students until 1839, 118 years after it was founded. And you would find that true of many places like ours. So Ashesi has done in 13 years what it took Yale 118 years to do. It's worth it. And so I would say on that, you go Ghana. W.B. Du Bois notes that education is not just about what happens in the schoolhouse, but also what happens without the schoolhouse in informal spaces. Formal education is critical, but so is informal education. And I have been impressed by the number of actual and virtual places and spaces in your country that are shining a bright light from MEST to iSpace Ghana to Startup Ghana to the work that Ethel's doing that we'll hear about later to the Nabuki Foundation, many, many more. Some of them noted here, online projects like Trotsky Journal to try and help spread the stories, the great stories of this country. Many, many different things. What a crowd out all, yo-yo tins. I've been to Chale Wood, which is 
one of the best such things happening anywhere on the planet. Not just a cool thing in Ghana, but I have to say it is an amazing thing from an international perspective. So you should celebrate all of these third spaces. Those that you may not know, you should get to know. Those that you do know, you should share with others. And you should find ways to continue to build this network of these lights into a much brighter beacon. And I have to say, as I've gotten to know the world and gotten to know Ghana, one thing is very clear. The world we live in is all about networks. It is not a command and control world. Networks now trump hierarchies. You guys have an extraordinary competitive advantage in that because there are a few places that are inherently as networked unitary as Ghana is. So I would say use that to your advantage. I have seen this time and time again in work with AFS Ghana and the And if you don't know AFS Ghana, there's some people you can talk to afterwards. Uh, really incredible. The network skills that Ghana has, the human skills, those soft skills are a truly potent natural resource, I think, in this networked world we live in. And I wanted to offer just one thought of a place that might be an even better hub for networking and for connecting people. It's this place that can be part of this web of a brighter Ghana, is now, but can be even more. As you may know, this is the ceiling of the mausoleum where Dr. W.E.B. Du Bois and his wife are buried at the Du Bois Center in Cantonments. And I really do think that this can be a place that can play more of a role. Du Bois himself embodied the power of creativity and education to liberate the minds and bodies, literally, in the 20th century. And I wonder whether the Du Bois Center can play some role in helping create more Vim Lux and liberation in Ghana today. I wanted to offer a brief word to the leaders and of me here with one of the leaders. I will say what I said to the Honorable Minister. I have truly been impressed by what I've seen of young people in this country. The creative energy, the energy in coding, the energy in arts. And in a network world, everyone has a role to play as a leader and a follower. And I would say here in my country and everywhere, governments, businesses must listen to the youth, learn from the youth, celebrate the youth, also be prepared to follow the youth sometimes. I have confidence because I see the extraordinary power and talent of young people throughout Ghana. We at Yale are very excited about in your the potential and in the region. And we really as partners trying to help build networks. Behind me on a map of what's called the Global Network for Advanced Management. It is something that our business school started, but we don't own it. There are 27 schools, including University of Ghana, Legon. Everyone owns it equally. There is no center, and everyone is the center. And this, which sort of looks like an air route map, is what the future of education looks like. And that future is now, and Ghana is playing a role in it and can play an even greater role in this networked world. Networked education is a key part. We also are very inspired by the students we see in Ghana, from Ghana and by the alumni back here in Ghana. There's a picture here of Kofi Annan speaking at Yale two years ago. And in particular, the Ghanaian students at Yale, he said, the future is yours. 
and that you should go back home and make a difference. I am happy to say that this generation of African students, I find, hear that message and want to heed that message in greater numbers and more than ever before. So I think we have found Ghanaian students to be inspiring for Yale and also can be very powerful parts with everyone here in a brighter network for Ghana's future. And I just wanted to close on a hopeful note in these tough times. I have been blessed to get to know many people from this country in the States and in this country in my many visits here. The first time I came was on a voluntary trip, which is of course the way that many of my country people engage with your country and countries like it. And the group of volunteers got together on the first day and said, why were they here? Most people said something about wanting to help, to help people in need. I actually said, based on Ghanaians I had known before, that I'm pretty confident that many American children in the future and their children's children will be working for Ghanaians. And that, <clears throat> and so we would better be served to get to know each other sooner than later. And I really do believe that. These may be very difficult times, but I do believe that if you support places further like Ashesi, if you continue to build this network of spaces and places, if you continue to activate your own networks, which is what today is about, to bring people together, inspire, but make action plans and, and build the network, if you do all of that, I really do believe that the black star can once again shine the brightest. And I have to say, I say that out of some self-interest, because as I said, your success is directly tied to my nation's success. So I encourage you to do what you can. Obviously, when you win and shine more brightly with your own brand of Vim Lux at Veritas, Ghana wins, Africa wins, but I'm also certain the world will win. Thank you.